I'm building these cabinets for my workshop. However, like it says in the title, these would be perfectly suitable for a kitchen as well. They're going to be high quality, solidly built cabinets that are modular in concept. For the bulk of the cabinet itself, I'll be using three quarter inch plywood. And here I'm pulling sheet out and manhandling it up onto my table saw and workbench to cut it down to a more manageable size. And to do that, I'm using my straight edge guide with a handheld circular saw. I've got to make the side panels first, and there are four of those, and I'm going to get three out of that first piece that I cut. However, I need to get a fourth one out of this longer piece, and I'm cutting that off now. While you're watching this, I thought I would tell you that I've joined the Maker's Mob and I already have one project up there, which is a detailed tutorial on building my miter sled that I recently did. And if you want to go deeper on the project that you're watching right now, this will be my next build series that will be posted there. So check it out by clicking the link in the description and I'll see you there soon with this new build series. The way this is going to be put together is with rabbit joints for the stretchers on top and I also need a rabbit in the back edge for the back panel and I'm cutting those here. And then to hold in the bottom shelf, I'm cutting a dado. I'm using my straight edge guide. And because I'm using a half inch bit in my router, I need to cut a strip to space it out to finish the cut. Since I'm working from a plan, I thought it would be a good idea to mark out and install the drawer slides. Even though it does make the side panels heavier and harder to handle, it's a lot easier to do it now before the cabinet is assembled. There are more parts to cut from the three quarter inch plywood. I need panels for the bottom of the cabinet and stretchers for the top.
Next, I'm going to get them together with some polyurethane construction adhesive in the joints. I'm starting with the bottom shelf. And then I'll get the stretchers put in the top, one on the front and one on the back. These are held in with some brads while I drive in some two inch screws. For the face frame, I'm going to be using hardwood and I'm starting with rough lumber. So I need to cut that down to size and flatten one side on my homemade jointer before sending it through the planer to bring it down to the final dimensions. To assemble the face frames, I'm going to be using dowels, and I've made a kind of a disposable dowel jig that, as it turns out, doesn't work very well, so don't use my example here. If you have a pocket hole jig, it would probably work a lot better than this. Once again, I use polyurethane construction adhesive to put the face frames together. And now I'm going to clamp them up and let them dry. I want to make sure that they're square by measuring the diagonals. To fasten the face frames to the cabinet, I'm going to be using biscuits and glue, two on the top and two on the bottom.
I let the glue on the face frame dry overnight and removed the clamps and now I'm taking a scraper to the corners just to flush those up before sanding it with 220. Now to finish these off before I install them, I'm going to apply two coats of clear water-based polyurethane. That completes this phase of the build. I'll be installing these shortly, and then I'll be building all of the drawers that go in these cabinets, and that'll be the subject of the next video.